All right, so you might be asking yourself, why aren't we reviewing Alien Resurrection? Yeah, I asked you that when I walked in, Steve. Today, I came prepared. Well, you're failing me, because you should be prepared every day. But I figure I saved this shirt for one of my favorite Alien movies. Alien vs. Predator Requiem? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we had got contacted by a fan, Simon Rez. Get your shoutouts. If you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, he also has a YouTube channel. Link in the description below. But he got a hold of me and asked me if I wanted to review a movie. And he sent me Death Kappa on Blu-ray. Which uh, I do appreciate it. I don't know if you needed to send me the Blu-ray for this. Although it was convenient because I can give Arnez the DVD and then I can watch it on Blu-ray. See that shit, man? He <laughs> gives me the crappy quality and he gets the high-def version of the wires and fires. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but, do appreciate it. This is definitely going into my kaiju collection. That is freaking awesome. I also want to bring up, too, that we got the fan art. It's right here. We got an awesome drawing sent to us on Facebook by Blake Early. Which is super great. Kind of sums it. up what goes on here in a nutshell. Which uh, we'll have a picture right here. You're awesome, man. Thank you. I love it. Oh, yeah. It's great. I want to, I, I kind of understand what's going on with the t-shirt for <laughs> your wife <wondering> and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Although, one thing. Why am I more bald in that one than I normally am? It's okay, man. I understand there has to be some differentiated features. It's not cool. Not cool. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'll give you a pass. Yes, this it's fine. Keep it up. Appreciate <laughs> it. Listen up, Rangers. Welcome to the Geek Chest. My name's Steve. Steve, why am I here? Because we're doing a review. But that was a YouTube clip. It wasn't a movie. It was just like a bunch of YouTube clips put together. That's what I watched. Okay, I know I handed you the DVD. And sometimes... I've gotten some DVDs from conventions and stuff like that where it's what shows on YouTube. No, that was a movie. No, I am 100% sure that was a YouTube movie somebody made. No, I'm 100% sure that came out on Blu-ray. No, it looks like some company. Somebody the same people that made Tokyo Gore Police. Somebody shot a bunch of little clips and just pasted them together. Yeah. No, people paid money to go see that in theaters. Today we're going over the film Death Kappa. Also, why am I hugging Jet Jaguar? Get over there. I don't know. Me and my buddy are just chilling here. We're ready to bash some good movies here today. Yes, yeah, so if you guys haven't seen the film Death Kappa, um, you definitely should go see it, man. I don't know how to explain the story. To be honest. It's kind of hard. It's this sort of girl. Well, this girl that wanted to be famous is coming back to her town to, to stay with her grandma who her grandma takes care of a shrine about kappas if you don't know what kappas are they're water goblins yeah it's essentially like a weird deformed turtle duck yes thing weird <laughs> and when she comes back she randomly comes across her grandmother gets hit by a bunch of drunk drivers and then a bunch of stuff happens but see that was the greatest thing ever like when they're like showing the guys driving a car and actually does a speed up version of it. And the guy's just like. <laughs> Where he's got the boom box. <laughs> yeah. This movie came out in 2010. Why does he have a boom box? I researched this movie a lot. I want to see what the budget was for this movie. Not a lot, right? Well, there was like seven different websites giving uh, seven different answers. The highest one was 2.2 million yen. You know how much? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. That was the highest one. So, uh, going into this review, we're spoilers. Spoiler heavy. You guys haven't seen it? If you're interested in checking this movie out, say it right now. It's a good time. Especially with friends. <laughs> now, for the rest of you that want to stick around for the spoiler portion of this, what the fudge is this movie about? Because, <laughs> for starters, I kind of understood how the beginning was happening. Yeah. I was like... Grandma gets hit by the car, she dies, girl has to take over, and then the Kappa shows up. But then it was like, kind of mysterious, but then it likes the music, and then it started dancing the music, then everybody started dancing the music with the Death Kappa, or with the Kappa, it's not Death Kappa at the time. And uh, then people were trying to 
take the Kappa. Even though they have their own water monsters that they made. I think you're watching this in a wrong perspective, Steve. You know that? You know how I, I sat down and I started watching this? I was like, oh my god, this is like atrocious anime. Let's enjoy this. It sure was. Death of the Grandma. Her at the shrine. Standing up and getting dressed instantly into that kimono or whatever it is outfit, you know. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. I mean, she was using the bow and arrow. It's just horrible anime, dude. You just yeah, look how she goes to defend the capital with one arrow. It's all you need, man. She's Kagome from Inuyasha. All right, so what the whole cap is saying. I understood what was going on, what this movie's going to be about, because I've seen Tokyo Gore Police. Yeah. I know this movie wants to be weird as possible. Because even when the girl's going into the town... She comes across randomly deformed people that didn't really need to be in the movie. They're just kind of there for the sake of, I guess, shock value. But that was amazing. He had a face in his face. It was like double Nicolas Cage. (laughs) Face in. (laughs) And those are the parts of, which, totally understand, because, again, seen Tokyo Gore Police and stuff, so kind of accustomed to weirdness being in the movie for sake of weirdness. And then we just get to the everybody dancing with the kappa and then the music talking about her having panties on today. Which is fine. It was kind of upbeat or pretty poppy. I can understand people started dancing around to it. The thing I love is uh, the cucumbers. <laughs> because, alright, so there's a scene in the movie that I'm still baffled on what happened. Because she shows, the girl sets the cucumbers to the kappa shrine. Comes back, they're gone. Next scene. The people that killed her grandma are at the beach. And they were eating hot dogs. After this scene happens, the guy goes to bite into what was a hot dog is now a ketchup covered cucumber. But it wasn't so, ketchup covered, it was blood. That was blood. That was the cucumbers that uh when they killed her. I looked it up. But <laughs> how did they get the so did they get the cucumbers from the shrine? No, I'm assuming some mysterious Kappa power moved it there, but it's the cucumbers that, uh, because I know what scene you're talking about. That scene was like, what the? So I went and researched it. And those are the cucumbers that went to pull uh, apart when they killed the grandmother. Yeah. And you see the cucumbers covered in blood. Those are the cucumbers that they're eating. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You take that in, Steve. <laughs> and then what the heck attacked the people? I understand it's supposed to be the fish dudes, but they don't actually show the fish dudes. All I see is a black mass grabbing the dummy thing and... It's literally... Oh, did you see the tasers, though, they use? Those things are amazing. (laughs) Where's this... And there's like a lightning flash. I was like, oh. That was amazing, though. Like, when that in the car... Looks like they're just doing the humpty and you just see the arm falling out, leg. <laughs> yeah, the guy's like, they're still screaming, the head's flying out. He's like, ah. Oh. I don't oh. think that's how that works. Oh, Steve, what? what is the favorite quote that they keep saying in that movie every time somebody dies? Mommy. <laughs> I will admit. Well, sorry, the first time was pretty funny. Then it kind of starts running its course throughout the rest of the movie. Because, all right, so after we get with the Kappa... They try to kidnap the Kappa, so they kidnap the girl instead. They take her to their evil lair, where they're going to convert her into a fish person with electricity. How does that work? I don't know. They don't explain it. It's just like, we're going to transform you. Ha ha ha! I guess that's just how that happens. Okay, so explain that part to me. What are those neo-Nazi Japanese people? They were, um... Uh, I forget what they were officially called in the movie because I didn't pay that close of attention to it. I'll be honest. But they were like the previous like guards from World War II and they wanted to use the fish people to attack the United States but then the Japanese of course think it's unethical so they scrapped the project. Well the doctor that was dead but the wheelchair was moving and he was moving by himself but he was dead she said he was dead, so why was he moving by himself? Don't know, but that doctor made the fish people and just kept going with it, trying to evolve them. Why was she making out with her own grandfather? I don't know. Why does she shoot her grandfather? Why is the director from Neon Genesis Evangelion in this movie? And also Shin Godzilla. 
I, I gotta say, probably the one part out of the entire thing that actually kind of like bothered me a little bit was how they would do the shots in there. Because when they had it fixated on the people, it actually looked sort of professional. But then when they were doing like the room painting shots and the faraway shots, it kind of seemed like what we're doing right now. Oh, really? It wasn't the part when the lights were at the background you can see that's actually back screen and not the Shh, sky? we're not there yet. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> or the strings. We're not there yet. <laughs> we're getting there. We're talking about this right now. That that was the that was a part that bugged you. Yes, so it was one of the parts that bugged me. Because I understand what this movie's trying to do. <clears throat> okay. But there was a lot of questions that are going unanswered. Like for instance, so they try to convert the girl. The Kappa comes to save the day with his sumo wrestling skills. Because Kappa's all no sumo. That's their martial arts style of choice. Which is awesome. Because <laughs> he kicks crap out of everybody. The little guy tries to use some, like, I don't freaking know karate stuff on him. That was amazing. The cap's just standing there. That's cool. <laughs> Takes him out. And then the guy gets his sword out. And the girl gets a spear and cuts the machine that was possibly transforming her. Huh? Huh? What? Yeah. What was she like? Why, how was she running? It looked like she was running with Japanese flag in the background. <laughs> I love that part, though. It's just the flag. And, uh, the guy's like, uh, uh. <laughs> Told you. Greatest anime ever. <laughs> yeah. So, after uh, thwarting their plans, the girl decides she's going to end it all and sets off the nuke in the building, killing everybody. Or you would think. Yeah. Because they don't explain that part either. They set the nuke off, and then a giant fish monster appears in Japan. I'm assuming it evolved from those three guys. From yeah, the they Empire. did like a King Ghidorah thing. Yeah. They don't explain that, that, how, that how that happened, but, but it's an assumption. Assuming. And so the monster goes on a rampage. They try to stop the monster. Of course, they don't succeed. Which, uh, for this scene, is awesome. For what we were explaining about, like, for... YouTube purposes. It's awesome. It's kind of like when I go to G-Fest and watch like the Tokusatsu Room stuff. It's literally the same thing. Except I say they probably do it better. <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> oh, cold blooded. <laughs> but what was cool is I actually thought the kaiju looked pretty cool. He kind of seemed like something that would appear on Ultraman. Yeah. So that's saying a little bit to the quality of that. I would say older Ultraman. But... It's something that I definitely see more made for TV kaiju than a film kaiju, which kind of translates with some of the budget as well. The only thing that really, uh, what made this part so freaking hilarious for me and why I keep going watching this movie is one, all the vehicles running around, you can definitely tell her toys. You can definitely see all the strings, so if that's gonna bug you, might not be your thing. I also like that some of the tanks kind of look like tanks, but they were driving very rigidly and wobbly. Except then you would also see some of them have the radio control antennas still sticking out of the tanks. That was a great thing. <laughs> what was your awesome? show? Well, it's so hilarious, too, because you see, like, when they bring in, like, the death laser machine, it's, like, wobbling. And watching, like, going to G-Fest, even watching commentaries on how Toho strictly tries to keep that stuff out of their movies and how they go about trying to do it, they just didn't even bother with this movie. No, no, it was just like, okay, let's roll with this. That and um, I really wish they wouldn't use the searchlights. When uh, you just see the blue background, it doesn't look that bad. Until they start using the spotlights and going all over the place. Because the problem is, is when they did this, the lights would go onto the walls. And you can definitely tell it's just like blue painted brick. So I really wish they would have uh, at least tried to work it out a little better or even just used the sheets. Yeah. If they would have just had a sheet down, wouldn't increase the budget that much, and kind of would have cut out the whole building seam lines that you see in the background. Which, that's probably the part where I'm just watching it. I laugh really hard, mainly because of just how bad it is. <laughs> Talking about bad things. My favorite scene is when a reporter dies. Oh, where he transforms to the toy. He's like, I'm on fire, but I can't move. <laughs> And it goes back to the toy. 
And it, uh, so you can see the string of the toys just shaking. It's on fire. And it goes back to the report. And he's like, Mommy! <laughs> goes back to the toy. You can see the string shaking. I was like... My favorite is the one part where, like, the city's on fire. But you see, like, the paper burning in the background. <laughs> That's so good. Oh my god. Like, like, Solve and res, what did you do? <laughs> uh, once you get past that point, they try to defeat the kaiju, but everybody's so terrified to attack the kaiju, people won't shoot at it. He was screaming for like five minutes, attack! Attack! And everybody's like, attack! Why aren't you shooting at it? <laughs> but everybody's peeing their pants, so they get stomped on, which I, one thing I think was cool. Is when the kaiju actually squished people, you saw like them indented into the ground. That was those, pretty sweet. Those clay models. Oh, still neat though. And then you get the random semblances of vehicles trying to take out the kaiju, like the remote control tanks. Which I think is funny because when they fail and they're like retreat and they're just like running back into each other, you're just like <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. Funny thing too is they actually translate that into the movies because the guy flips over just like with the tank. Yeah. And then he also yells mommy and then dies from fire. And then you have the jets that are flying around attacking them. Here comes Steve's favorite character. <laughs> I don't know what to think of him. Because uh, he's definitely... Uh, you don't know if he's really full on drag, but he's wearing makeup at least. And he definitely has a more feminine voice to him. So I'm not 100% sure what they were... Okay, I can guess what they were going for. He was awesome. Fire! <laughs> Direct hit! And then, of course, he dies, yells mommy as well. Just like everybody else in this movie. Man, these people love their mommies. Oh, of course. Who doesn't love their mommy? I love you, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> so, this needless to say, the buildings actually aren't that bad in this, though. No. Like, I like the setup. It's just... It's mainly done for the sake of laughs of how crappy of a job they did with the vehicles and even tried to hide the stuff. You notice what the first building is that he destroys that creature? What? It's got a uh, that nude photo up there or that billboard. That's the first building he destroys. He's like... Argh! I like to that he kind of looks at it real quick. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes on a rampage, even survives the... Oh, what the heck was that thing? It was like the Gamma Monster Destroyer or something. It's like the Mazer Lasers. Tanks. It's like the Mazer Tanks from Godzilla. They use one to try to take it out with a rocket pod sitting next to it. Shoots rockets and then lasers. It's amazing. Yeah. Of course that fails too. And then, uh, magically Death Kappa appears to try to save the day. Or at least so we thought. Because he fights the monster, which the monster ends up losing towards the end of the fight. But it's still hilarious because you get to see some sumo moves, but then it's randomly a lot of hitting... Tail gets ripped off. So then he defeats him by blocking his fire breath and pushing it into him. I understand he's a death gap, a water goblin. Where did that water shield come from? Like it it's just powers, man. I, he ate that cucumber. That giant helicopter sized cucumber that can they we brought talk him. about that. <laughs> that was the greatest thing ever. The helicopter just brings a cucumber, he's like ah, 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 the helicopter destroyed. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. And then he beats them, and then they find out they can't defeat Def Kappa either. Def Kappa now goes on a rampage. Because he got large from the nuclear radiation, I guess. I'm assuming. So he goes on a rampage, and how they end up stopping him is the girl shows back up, starts singing him to him again, calms him down. I don't forget, she pours water on top of his plate. Because it was getting dry. The end. God dang it, what did we watch? <laughs> so, needless to say, costumes are actually, uh, again, not that bad. I actually like the Death Cap outfit more than I thought I would. Yeah. Because looking at the cover, it looks kind of goofy, <clears throat> and he doesn't blink ever. But it's fine. I thought everything else, like, it has a lot of nice details going on with it. The fish people... We're pretty decent as well. The only one thing I think that kind of bothered me was the fish girls. I didn't really like the whole gill setup of the teeth. It just kind of looked rushed. Yeah. Anything else you guys say? Yeah, when he eats that huge cucumber, it's all stuck in his mouth while he's fighting. <laughs> he's just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's super powered. That's awesome. So, in the end for Death Kappa, 
What did you think of it? Would you recommend this to the average moviegoer? Hell yeah. Everybody's got to experience this thing, dude. All jokes aside, this movie is so bad, so bad, that you have to see this. The horrible strings, the backgrounds, the characters, everything. It's just horrible. Just don't pay attention. Just, like, zone out and watch it. Yeah, it's definitely not for somebody that is going to want a serious movie. Like, if you want good special effects, good practical effects, a story, good acting, driven, go watch Civil War. Yeah, just don't don't watch this movie. This, this isn't it for you. But if you want to have a good time with friends, want to bash on a movie, and laugh the entire time while watching it, because more or less probably some of us could actually done it better. I'm not saying me. I wouldn't have. What are you talking about? We could have did a better job. I would have used Stranger Things. <laughs> just no. like that one skit I did with Mogiro where I just had to like go across the screen. See, that's the thing, Steve. We would just cut off the strings and use our fingers. Just cut off the middle, man. Ah, yeah. <laughs> just like... <laughs> yep. Works perfectly. So if you guys are looking for something goofy, a little bit out of the ordinary, and it's kaiju-related... Definitely go check out Death Kappa. Pretty cool. I don't know about buying it on Blu-ray, but DVD seems fine. I read the, one of the reviews. A guy says, the worst Godzilla movie has nothing on this. He gave this movie a five star. <laughs> right. Oh, that's great. But anyways, what did you guys think of Death Kappa? Have you actually seen it? Please listen on the comment section below. And help us defeat those characters by hitting that like button, subscribe, become a ranger today, and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.